Hello folks, Mundane Man here again, and today we are working on our 2019 Honda CRV. Today we're going to do a simple oil change on it. This is the first oil change I've done as the last oil changes have been done at the dealer as part of that old package where you uh, buy a vehicle and they give you free oil changes as long as you follow their prescribed uh, fluid changes and stuff and I got to the point where I'm not paying $600 for them to change the brake fluid when it's not really necessary. So now it's up to me to start doing the oil changes and maintenance on this vehicle. This one has the whopping big 1.5 liter Honda Turbo. So it's got all kinds of horsepower. Yeah, right. But it doesn't do too bad for itself. It's got enough get up and go. We're gonna change the oil, check some fluids, maybe test out the battery and that type of thing. Now there's some channels that say, hey, you know, why does it take you so long to do an oil change? Well, basically, it's not just the oil you're changing, you're doing uh, inspection of all the different components and making sure everything is still within spec. And also maybe we'll look at the air filter and that type of thing. What I'll do is I'll uh, break this uh, video up into chapters so that if there's a specific thing that you're looking to do, uh, you can just focus on that. Otherwise, just sit back, relax, watch the whole video. So let's get at it. So we got the vehicle up on our ramps and got the emergency brake on, the wheels chocked so we're safe underneath here. And the first thing I'm going to do is take off this uh, safety shield. It takes some slotted uh, attachments and some Phillips screws. And when I was looking at this to begin with, I thought, gee, there's one missing there. Thanks, dealership. You think when you're going to the dealership you're going to get quality work, but you're not. The other thing I found too is it's sure hard to find metal, actual metal on a vehicle to stick a magnetic light to. So this is the 2019 model, but this process is good for vehicles that are probably uh, 2017 to 2022. I think with a 1.5 liter there isn't too much difference here. So I'm just Turn and open these uh, slotted screw type clips here that just keep falling from the sky. They even just look like plastic body clips. Now I get the Phillips screw attachments here. And to go get a bigger screwdriver, these do not want to seem to move. I'm gonna have to go back and find some leverage. Those things are tight. So all it took was a little bit more leverage. I don't know why those were so tight. Kind of rusty, I guess. Let's do the two at the front. This one already loosened off. Now, does this seem like the easiest approach just to do a stupid oil change? No. Three different types of screwdrivers to get the stupid shield off. And there it is. Yay. There's the drain plug, even says engine oil, so uh, they make it so that a monkey can do this. Let's start with taking off the oil filter, then we'll drain out the engine oil. Well, let's see if we can take this off by hand. It shouldn't be that tight, but if those, that cover was any example, this could be tight. And I've got the wrist strength of a little girl. Okay, let's get a filter wrench. So I have this type of oil filter wrench here. Just fits onto the base of the filter. And this wrench is for the small oil filter. Then you just stick a 3 8 inch ratchet or with an extension. Oh my god. These guys at the dealership are 
sure your tray is catching the oil. I missed a little bit. I always seem to make a mess. And this oil looks like it was overdue. It smells just like oil though. These engines do have a history of fuel flooding and um, that's where the fuel is getting into the oil because of the high pressure fuel system and you probably should change your oil fairly frequently just because of that. Don't always rely on the uh, change oil meter on the dash. Now make sure your rubber gasket came off with the filter because you don't want it stuck up in there and then you've got a filter on with two separate uh, gaskets. It'll leak for sure. So I'm just going to wipe away the used oil here and clean off the surface where the filter spins in. Wipe up the oil around here. Okay, and I've got my new filter. This one's a K&N. Couldn't get a uh, Wix off of Amazon, but um, this is the specified filter for a Honda with a 1.5. I'll post below what the uh, actual filter is, and I've lubed up the uh, gaskets so it doesn't get stuck on there. Spin it on hand tight. And then give it about a quarter to half a turn. That should be plenty to keep it sealed. Now we're going to take the oil out of the oil pan and that is a 17 millimeter which I've got right here. Now let's see if they put this on with 200 foot-pounds. I'm going to use a ratchet and get more leverage on it. There's no reason for it to be as tight as that is. That's ridiculous. Maintain it at the dealer, they say. You'll get better service, better quality work. here underneath it's always a good idea to just check around looking for any obvious leaks anywhere any rubber boots that might have uh, failed I just kind of like to look down the vehicle make sure everything looks relatively normal I don't have the wheels off but I just like to look at the struts make sure there's no leaking out of them always look pretty good uh, make sure there's no unusual wear patterns on the rotors or severe scoring. That looks fairly normal. They're rusty because I washed it yesterday and they just dried to a rust and I haven't driven it very much. Okay, I cleaned off my uh, drain plug. Now it's probably a good idea to change this gasket. Um, I don't have one so I'm not going to today but uh, you can get a package of these pretty cheap. I just forgot to and I've already drained the oil, so I'm just going to use the same one that's there. I may regret it if it starts to leak, but for now, the old one will do fine. Now I'm going to tighten it up, but I'm going to make sure it's tight enough that I can get it off next time without having a stroke. Okay, let's get our dirty oil out of the way and we'll put that lower pan cover back on or this shield of whatever. So there's this tab on um, the passenger side that's going to fit into this hole of the cover so that uh, knows you're putting it on the right direction and the front here goes underneath the plastic at the front of the vehicle. I'll show you once I got it back in where everything sits. Then I have our screw fasteners that are a Phillips. 
the large size Phillips screwdriver, a number three. Get that started. I'm at the front here, two of them. Slotted fasteners that they turn about 90 degrees. Like that. Okay, so that the shield put back on. You remember you got it tucked underneath that tab and we have it tucked underneath the black plastic here. We've got Phillips screw size number one, Phillips screw size number two, and then slotted type here to hold that tray all in. It's not difficult to get it out, but it just seems ridiculous that you need three different types of tools just to drop that tray out. Okay, let's fill the oil back up. It needs the uh, 0W20 viscosity, and I'm using uh, Castrol Edge. I buy it at uh, Costco in Canada, and it seems to be uh, relatively cheap. And the oil goes on the passenger side, right in that fill spot right there. And you can see on the cap it says 0W20. Now these caps can be tight to get off. Sometimes you got to use channel lock pliers to turn them. This one is coming off relatively nicely. I like to look in the cap, make sure there's no foamy white stuff that would indicate you're getting uh, antifreeze into the oil, which would make me sad, but and I'm just going to clean the cap off a bit. Stick a clean funnel in there. Now this is a 5 liter jug. The uh, vehicle takes 3.7 quarts, which equates to, similarly, about 3.7 liters. We'll double check it. I'm going to pour a bunch in. Okay, I'm going to stop there, check the oil, and the dipstick is down here, and it's orange. You have to remember, too, we haven't run it and we changed the filters, so uh, the filter does need to get filled up with probably oh half a liter, quarter liter, or quart of oil. And right now we're showing it as right at the full mark. Not quite to the full mark. Probably can't see it in the camera. It's just below that uh, upper hole there. So it's going to need a bit more, but I think what I'll do is I'll run it for about five minutes and then let the oil drain down and then check it again and see how much more we need to add. Okay, after running it, I'm going to let it sit for five minutes, let the oil drain down to the pan. In the meantime, why don't we check some of the fluids. Uh, this is the washer fluid. It's got the blue lid and it looks like your washer fluid emblem on your dash. Don't mix it up with the antifreeze. Looks a little low. I'm going to add some to that. This is the antifreeze overflow here. And that one is really hard to see what the level is. Now I haven't run it for long so I am going to open this cap and it should not spray. If this is hot or if the engine's hot, do not open that cap. What do we got in there? Let's get our light to see if we can look in there. I can see fluid. So I'm sure it's within the min max of the uh, tank there. Let me stick my finger in there. And again, don't do this if it's hot. Okay, I stick my finger in and about to the first knuckle of my finger. Insert dirty joke there and it's good. This stuff is blue, by the way. 
put the uh, pressure cap back on. Now, the power steering on this baby is electric. You can see the power steering motor down there. So, which is that guy there, it is uh, electric and does not require hydraulic fluid um, to be checked. Let's come over here to the brake fluid. Should always make sure your cap is clean. It'll any dust and debris. We'll open that up and have a look. It looks to be full and you can kind of see on the container that it's full. It is an indicator as your fluid is going down marginally. If it's going down a lot you got a leak but if it's going down marginally it is an indication of brake wear because as the pistons in the calibers push out because the brake pads are wearing it takes more fluid so you'll see the fluid go down a bit. Now it's not at the max level but it's above the minimum level which is tough to see under there. So we're good on the brake fluid and the color looked okay. Brake fluids are generally clear to light brown this fluid is getting a little bit darker, so it might be time to do some bleeding or fluid change on that. Well, while we're waiting for the oil to drain down, let's do a battery test. We'll look at the terminals first to make sure they're clean. So I can get the uh, protective covers off, like such, and the negative is uncovered. So I have this battery tester that I've used in other videos. I can link one up above if you want. But basically it simulates a load on the battery. So we're going to clamp on to the uh, positive, like such, and clamp on to the negative. One thing it does is shows the battery voltage right there and it's showing that we are 12 volts which is right where we should be now i'm going to make sure the clamps are on tight under the battery posts and i'm going to simulate a load and it's basically an electrical element that draws from the battery and you hold it for 10 seconds and it'll give you an indicator on the battery health okay after the test it shows we're still at 12 volts and we're in the green. The battery in this vehicle is three, three and a half, just about four years old. So we should get another year out of this battery. And uh, overall it looks okay. Not great, but it's okay. Okay, I'm just gonna top up the washer fluid. I'm using this is winter washer fluid because it's good to minus 45, but it works year-round as well. May not be the greatest for getting bugs off, but it'll do. Okay, let's check the air filter. Um, at the front of the vehicle on the driver's side, we have the air box here. And there are four Phillips screws going around the perimeter that you need to take out so that you can get access to the air filter. And you can also use a number eight socket because those guys at the dealership did it to me again and had these cranked on so tight, unnecessarily tight. The socket is probably better anyways because you get better traction on the, the nut holding the filter housing down. There's one on each corner. Just lift up the housing and underneath, right in there is where your filter goes in. This filter looks pretty good. I'm going to shine a light through it. You can see the light shining right through the filter. So um, we're going to leave that for this time. If you felt inclined, you could probably blow it out and get rid of any dust that might be in there. There's a tab on this filter right there, and it goes towards the front of the air box. And there's a notch inside of the air box that fits over that tab. So, pretty hard to get it wrong. Okay, let's check the oil again and see what we got. 
Okay, so it's sitting about at the halfway mark. So I'm going to put another half a liter or quart in there and just top it up. Now let's reset that oil change reminder. So hit your foot on the brake, start the engine. And this is the uh, CRV with the touring edition, so it's got the, the bit of the fancier gadgetry. And you need to hit the information. And then you see on the dash it changes and we're going to scroll over using the arrow buttons. And we're going to go to the wrench and then hit enter. And there you see the oil life is at 20%. Now we're going to hold the enter button for about 5 seconds. And then it comes up with this uh, different screen here and we'll scroll up. And you can. this is where you can reset all various service items or you can just reset the oil change one specifically. So I'm going to reset all do items which I've selected by hitting the up or down arrow key and then I'm going to press the enter button and that completes the reset. And now you can see our oil life is back to 100%. Well that's it for this edition of Mundane Man, where I change the oil on a 2019 Honda CRV. Similar process probably from 2017 to 2022, maybe even 2023. This one has the 1.5 liter turbo. I don't know how many horsepower it is, but it does get up and go good enough. We also uh, checked the air filter and the fluids and made sure she's good for the summertime driving. So if you like these kind of videos, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, all those good things, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.